Hey guys, welcome back. It's Logan again. I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm trying to get back into it. And I have set up a Patreon if you wanna come support me and be a patron, that'd be awesome. And uh, my goal is to be able to do this full time one day. So uh, that's up to you, um, not pressuring it, but it'll be linked below. And as well, I have created a Twitter. So if you wanna follow me on Twitter, it's at Gloomy T Studios. That's my handle. And today we're gonna to be doing something pretty cool. We're gonna be making a sprite flashing effect. This is something I recently did in a game and it works really well. So we're gonna be creating a shader. It's pretty basic. And we're gonna be making an easy way to make the flash happen uh, so you can implement it in your game. And let me give you a preview of exactly what we're gonna be doing, the end goal. So we have our uh, little guy here and we want him in a flash. If he gets hit or picks up a power up, you can also change the colors of this if you want. So I'm just gonna hit space and it shows the flash, okay? And you can slow down the duration. It's really customizable. So we're gonna be going over that. I'm not gonna be going over the details super in depth of the shader coding. I'm gonna be making uh, some other videos um, in the same like shader series. So be looking out for those where I'd be going over stuff more in depth. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this project and open up, um, where is it, where is it? Okay, alrighty. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is gonna be a quick one. So I have my player sprite, uh, I made an object. It's empty right now. Let me go ahead and close all this extra stuff out. And then I placed him in my room. So if I hit play, all it's gonna do is show us our character. Awesome. So let's get to writing a shader. First off, uh, let's go to the draw event. And inside the draw event, we're just gonna say draw ourself. And let's create a just draw self. It's a neat little function they put in for us. And this is the draw event. Okay. And now I'm gonna hit play and we should get our character on the screen. Awesome. Sweet. Okay, so let's apply some effects to them. So let's go to our shaders over here on the right, and or if it's uh, on the left for you, and hit create shader. And this is gonna give us a simple uh, base shader to work from, and I'm gonna call it shd underscore flash. Okay, and that is the name of our shader that we're gonna, going to apply. So before we do anything in the shader code, let's make sure that's gonna work. So let's go back to our player, and above the draw self, let's do shader set. And we're gonna put in for the parameter our SHD flash. So what this is going to do is say, hey, uh, use this shader to render our uh, draw character. Whatever's in, under it, it's gonna use this shader to render. And then after it, we're gonna put shader reset. And what this is gonna say is, hey, uh, go back to what it was before. Go back to normal, the normal shader. But by default, GameMaker creates the uh, pass-through shader, so it's not going to do anything. It's going to print out exactly what we uh, put into it, so it's going to draw normally, okay? So now that we have our basic draw event set up, let's go ahead and edit our shader, okay? And I'm gonna open this up full screen for you guys. There, you'll see there's two tabs. This is the vertex shader, which we're not gonna go over today. This is for changing uh, vertices, so you can actually change how a sprite is drawn, like the actual shape of it. Instead, we're gonna to go to the fragment shader, uh, which is the second tab, the FSH. And the fragment shader is the actual coloring, so per pixel uh, shading, okay? So you'll see that we have our frag color. This is kind of our output color that's gonna be drawn on the screen, whatever this frag color is set to, okay? Now, admittedly, I don't know everything about these shaders. It's something I'm kind of learning right now and be expecting some more advanced uh, videos coming soon because I'm getting it kind of quickly. So I'm not positive what the VV color is yet, but I do know the text, this um, is going to be the texture 2D. This is gonna be the coordinate. So you have your sprite, that's your texture, right? So the GM base texture is your actual sprite image and the VV text coordinate is the actual pixel. So the coordinate of the pixel within your sprite. So what this is doing is um, just getting basically the color of that pixel and it's putting it back into frag color and that's gonna be what's outputted onto the screen, okay? So this is doing nothing right now. So the first thing we're going to do is extract the uh, texture 2D. So we're gonna extract the current pixel that we're trying to change the color of into a new variable and we're gonna call it color and equal and I'm just gonna copy and paste this texture 2D and then I'm just gonna remove everything under frag color, okay? And when you're doing these shaders, semicolons are very important. Um, this We're not programming in a game GML right now, okay? This is not GML. You can see we have a main function. Uh, this is similar to C or uh, C++ or something, okay? So the next thing we have to do, we created a um, 
variable called color, okay? And like I said, I'm not gonna go in depth into the actual programming here, uh, explaining what VEC2 and VEC4s are. I'm gonna make a separate video for that if you wanna understand it better. Um, but basically VEC4 is a um, variable type that can hold multiple values, it's an object, okay? So when we're setting our color, this is actually going to return a VEC4. So we actually have to tell uh, the engine or the shader, hey, this color uh, needs to be a VEC4. So it reserves enough space and memory, so when this gets uh, returned, it can store it into color. If you try to store it into a float, for example, a float is a decimal number, a decimal point number, uh, it won't work because this is returning an object, it's returning a VEC4, okay? So we actually have to specify, hey, this is gonna be a VEC4, and store this information, this color, into um, the VEC4. Now, what kind of information is it storing? Well, it's storing uh, R, which is going to be the red. It's storing RG. It's storing blue. And then it's also storing alpha. So we have our alpha, uh, our four values, red, green, blue, alpha. That, that represents a color, okay? So the alpha is obviously the transparency, and the other ones speak for themselves. So that color actually stores these four values. Anyway, back onto it. So let's set a new color for our output. So right now, this color is not going to do anything. Let's just set it to equal white. Let's make our output equal white with no transparency. Well, we can create a new VEC4. And in parentheses, we could put the four values we want. 255, 255, 255. This is white. This is the color that represents white. And then let's do 1.0. And this is important that you put the zero after this um, because this is a floating point value that it expects, okay? So um, if you just put a one, that's an integer. So we want to put one zero here. And that should be it. And if we run, our sprite should actually be white, okay? Because we just set the every pixel color to white. And you'll see that we get the entire box that's white. Now, uh, why is that? Well. That's because it's taking every pixel in the box one by one, because remember our sprite is a box with a transparency around it, okay? Or uh, it's an image inside of a box and uh, we have transparent pixels at certain points in that image, okay? So it's going to every pixel and it's saying, hey, we're gonna set this one to white, we're gonna set this one to white, we're gonna set this one to white. Now, how do we just make it draw the shape of our sprite? Well, we can do a check to see if the color that we're trying to change is already transparent. And if it's transparent, then we don't want to set its color to this, obviously. So what we could do is we could do if color, remember we can grab the alpha value from our current pixel. So we do if color A is not equal to zero. Remember, zero alpha is transparent. So if it's not equal to zero, then we're going to change the color. So the current pixel that we're trying to change, if it's already alpha, we don't want to set it to Oh, shoot, not alpha, okay? So we're changing, um, it's going to ignore the transparent pixels th at this point. So it's not going to change the transparent pixels. And now we should get the shape of our sprite in white. Awesome. So we're kind of halfway there, but we want this white to diminish, right? Um, I don't really like the white blink. I like having it fade away. And how do we do this? Well, we have to be able to change this alpha value, okay? So if we set it to 0 0.5 right now, you'll see it's actually gonna be transparent. We're gonna set all the pixels on our sprite to transparency. There you go, it's a little bit darker now. But we wanna be able to change this from inside Game Maker, depending on certain values. So how we could do this is using um, a type uh, of uniform up here. So above your main method, you type uniform, this means that it's kind of a global, so things from the outside can change this uniform variable, okay? Uh, so we set it as uniform, and then we need to set it as a float because our alpha value is going to be a floating uh, point type, So because as a decimal, so we're gonna use uniform float, and then we're gonna name it um, alpha. We'll just name it alpha, that's fine. And if you're afraid that you're gonna accidentally uh, call a keyword or something in this language you don't know, then you can do underscore alpha. That's just fine. And then we don't need to set it to anything. We're just declaring that we're going to be using this. So when this runs, uh, the program's going to uh, store room to store a float in memory. And it's going to be referenced by alpha. That's why in other languages you need to declare variables before you can use them. Because you're saying, hey, I need room to store this later on. And it reserves room in memory for that. 
So now we've uh, declared our alpha variable and we want this 0.5 to be set to whatever that alpha variable is. And as I said, uniform is can be accessed from the outside, uh, things from the outside. So uh, from GameMaker, we're actually going to be able to set this alpha uh, variable. Okay. So now we're setting it to 255, 255, 255. By the way, this is red, green, and blue. And after this, it, it'll be easy for you to apply to another uniform, float, maybe red. And you could set this to red, right? And you could do the same for green and blue. And you can actually change all these values from inside GameMaker. So dynamically, you could change the color and the uh, brightness, okay? so. Awesome. Now we have basically everything we need here. It's it's done. Uh, kind of study this for a second, see what's going on. We set a variable alpha. Uh, we're setting the alpha of the color that we want to draw, uh, the pixels that we want to draw, or reset kind of. Awesome. So let's go back to our player, and remember this. Uniform float alpha. Okay. So now under our shader set, we can do um, shader get uniform. And what this is going to do is get uh, the reference and memory to that value we set. So we give it the shader to get a uniform from. And we're getting it from shader flash, of course. And then the uniform name is going to be our variable name. And you put this inside of uh, quotes because you're just telling GameMaker, hey, look for this uh, variable that we're going to want to change. So remember, that's underscore alpha. So that's the variable it's going to grab. It's going to grab the reference and memory to that so it can go to that memory location and be able to change the value. And we need to save, this This is going to return the memory location, right? So we need to save that in um, a variable. We'll call it, um, let's just call it alpha, or uh, shade alpha equals, oh, let me maximize this for you guys. So we got shade alpha equals shader get uniform, okay? And now we need to change that value. So we could do shader set uniform. And now you can see it gives you some extra options here. Uh, you can use matrices, you can use i's which are going to be um, integers, um, and the f is floats. And you can see you could use arrays as well. And I'm not going over that today, but we're going to use a float because we're going to be setting a float. You have to remember that alpha is a float. So this is telling GameMaker, hey, we're going to be changing a float. What uniform are we going to be changing? We're going to be changing shd alpha that we just got. So we got a reference to it. That's the one we want to change. And then now we need to give it its value. So we can give it a value of, um, let's just say flash. We're going to have a variable called flash in a moment, OK? And that's what we're going to change it to. So that's going to be um, a decimal point between 0 and 1. That's what flash will be. And that's going to be the alpha that gets changed, OK? And now, actually, let's go ahead and make sure this is working. I'm going to set it to 0 0.5 before we do the flash thing, OK? So let's kind of separate this stuff out. So this is shader stuff, then we draw ourselves, then we reset, okay? And now if we play it, we should get the same effect, the uh, halfway transparent sprite, because we're setting the alpha there. There you go, halfway transparent sprite. And, oh, sorry, I closed out of that. If we go back to our shader, you can see that we don't have 0.5 hard-coded. So, okay, from GameMaker, it's changing this value inside the shader. That's great. Now we just need to change it dynamically with the flash, right? So we can, we're can we going to make a variable called flash. And if flash is greater than 0, then we want to execute this code, OK? So I just uh, put all the code inside of this if flash is greater than 0. And inside of this, we're going to do flash minus equal. And this can be how fast you want it to decay, OK? So I'm going to do 0 0.05, all right? So every step, flash is going to be decreased by uh, 0 0.05 until it's equal, or to, equal to or less than 0. That's what we want. Awesome. So now we need to go to our create event to create this flash variable in our player. So we're going to go to the create event. And uh, I'll just do init for the description. And we're going to set flash to equal 0, right? So now, actually, if we run the game at this point, flash is equal to 0. So none of that code is going to be run. And the player won't even be drawn at this point, OK? you'll see it's not being drawn because none of that draw code is being run. But we can draw the player up here. Draw self once again. Remember, I have it twice here. I have it here. And then we're going to draw that white uh, image on top of it to give the flash effect. And I'll show you in a moment. You can actually combine it with um, blend mode. 
So uh, now we're drawing our player. Remember the other stuff's not getting, uh, the flash isn't being rendered on top of the player. And now let's simulate a hit event, like our player gets hit or picks up something. So we're gonna do a key press and we're gonna do space. Uh, then we're gonna set flash to equal one, okay? And now if I run it, it's going to be, we can actually hit space and simulate that flash. So it's not actually decreasing, so we're doing something weird here. Let's go back to our draw event. Oh, we still had it at 0 0.5 here, my bad. So we set this back to flash, set uniform. Remember we're setting the alpha to flash and now we should get that smooth flash effect, okay? Boom, and there you go. Now you have the smooth flash effect. Now you can combine this with blend modes so uh, GPU, if you're on the older game maker, I think it's draw set blend mode. GPU set blend mode. And we could do BM add. If you don't know about blend modes, uh, look up some tutorials, there's some decent ones. And at the end of the shader reset, we can reset our blend mode as well to normal. Let me go ahead and maximize this again. Oops, sorry guys. There you go. So we're setting our blend mode, add. We're decreasing, our, let's actually decrease our flash before all this keep it smooth. So we have our blend modes, uh, then we have our shader stuff, then we draw ourselves, and then we reset our blend mode. And this blend mode thing is actually going to make it even like kind of uh, more neon -y or something. I don't know how to explain it. You see it's really bright, okay? So that's kind of a cool effect. And uh, the draw self will keep up with your uh, sprite index and everything. So yeah, this is how you can implement uh, a flashing effect for your player. And now anytime that you want to get hit, you just set flash equal to one. This takes care of everything else for you uh, without wasting any extra processing or anything. Awesome, so I hope this helped and I think this effect is really cool. Again, you can change the colors in your uh, flash. Let's go ahead and change some values. I don't really know how to make values out of this, but let's do like um, 200. Let's see what color this uh, kind of brings us with. So yeah, you can edit these colors and you can follow the same thing with the uniform. Okay, it's not working. Uh, let's do 100, let's do zero, I have no idea what I'm doing at the moment, but this should be RGB. It should be setting the color to uh, red, green, blue. Um, yeah, there you go, now we have a green. <laughs> so you can play with that and kind of get different effects. Uh, you can see how this could be used for like a glowing effect, as long as you pulsated the uh, flash and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, I hope that helped and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Gloomy T Studios. And if you wanna support me, support me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And hopefully uh, one day I'll have enough um, followers to where I'll be able to do this full time and get some really cool tutorials out there for you guys. Anyway, thank you for watching and you have a good one.